ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد all praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, as we all preparing ourselves where we will start the month of Ramadan, insha'Allah ta'ala, a month that we are waiting for every year and looking forward for it and every year that it comes and it comes with a special flavor. And subhanAllah, no matter how many Ramadan you have witnessed, you have fasted, you have practiced during that month, it's still every year it has its own excitement. It's that month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have prescribed upon us one of the greatest act of worship, which is as-siyam. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O who you believe fasting was prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those who are before you so you may attain taqwa. So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرًا لَكُمْ If you fast, it is better for you. It is good for you. And a taqwa, that's all we're trying to attain during the fasting. What's a taqwa means? A taqwa, it's a word that has three levels, three meanings. The first meaning is the basics, where you fulfill the basics of Islam. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and you submit yourself to Him. And in Ramadan, it's so clear that you fulfill that concept. It makes, logically, it makes no sense. Yani what's the difference between uh, 6.30 and 6.40. The difference is this siyam is valid because it's on time and this 10 minutes later after the time, it's invalid. But that's it, it's a submission. It's teach you to stand where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to stand. Stop where you so you're supposed to stop. Type three minutes only before Adhan and Maghrib, I will break my fast. No, you're not allowed. You know, why would I stop drinking water? Okay, I'm going to stop eating. It's not up to you to decide that with your own logic. It's a full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's basically something that Siyam teach you to attain that first level of taqwa, which is that complete submission to Allah. And you worship Him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, sometimes he tells us what, there is everything he ordained, everything he prescribed, there is a wisdom behind it. But sometimes you know it, sometimes you don't know it. And that's where the belief comes, where the trust comes. Because I know how knowledgeable he is, how wise he is, and that's why I submit to him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second level of a taqwa is to fulfill the obligations and to abstain from the haram. And fasting is about that. As-siyam, it is an obligation. Fasting teach you to fulfill the obligation and to abstain from the haram. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, if someone fast and will not stop saying what is false and stop saying what is bad using all these false language and false languages and, 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 and bad languages and, and do the wrong things, the Prophet ﷺ said, that there is no point from leaving food and drinks. So it teaches you to stop, to change, to stop saying and doing what is haram. What's, the, what's the fasting without praying? That's why you see the Muslim care to pray all the time in the Ramadan. It teaches them to fulfill the obligations. A taqwa also has a higher level, a third level, which is when you do the recommended act and the volunteer act. Look how Muslim cares for taraweeh. Taraweeh is not an obligation. It's a recommended act. It's a highly recommended thing to do. And you see all the Muslim care for it. You'll see Muslim care to feed 
the hunger. And you look, Muslim looking to rush and haste to the iftar, which is a sunnah, and to delay the suhoor, which is a sunnah. Reading Quran, which is the sunnah. So, subhanAllah, it's very interesting how Ramadan teaches you all these three levels of taqwa. But that's just a push. So for you to pick up. And that's also teach you that the religion, there is, theoretically we say, the religion divided into principles and, you know, pillars, then obligations, then after that recommendation. Theoretically, yes, that's correct. But practically, when you practice the religion, all of them comes together. It's not like, okay, I'm going to fulfill all the obligation. Then when I finish the obligations, I go to the recommendation. It doesn't work this way. That's the theoretical classification. But the reality is, when you start practicing religion, you all this mixed together, it's called the religion, the deen of Islam. My brothers and sisters, some ulama said that taqwa, it is al-khawf min al-jaleel. To have that respect, to have that respect mixed with fear from the Almighty Allah. وَالْعَمَلْ بِالْتَنْزِيلِ That you practice what has been revealed to you. وَالْقَنَاعَةُ بِالْقَلِيلِ That you satisfy with whatever you receive, even if it's little. You're happy with it. And always I say, when Islam said you're happy with whatever little you earn or you got, it doesn't mean that you don't look for more. You're allowed to look for more. But you have to first to be happy with what you have before you start looking for more. That's what, that, what the, these statements means. And to prepare yourself for the day when you will leave. And this is something Ramadan should remind you of. Ramadan goes very fast and that's how your life is. I just can't think, every year I say that, but it's still, I, I'm in shock. God, we're fasting Ramadan next week. And I'm not even over the last Ramadan yet. And you're going to fast next week. It's just so fast. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ayyama ma'dudat. These are very few days. And I will remind you by the end of Ramadan that it will go like this. So make sure that you prepare yourself. I know some of you are young, healthy, but I tell you, death does not discriminate between healthy and young and old and sick. When your time comes, your time comes. But the point is, will you, you know, your time comes while you're doing something right or wrong, while you're ready for it or not. And that something is not in your hand. You're going to die, you like it or not, one day. Today, tomorrow, Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Musa, when the angel of death told him that this is a time for your death, and he was panicking, he said, can I delay that? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, how long you want to delay it? He said, make your hand wet and stick it on the back of a, like a ball or a cow, and whatever, how many hair would stick to your hand, you can add this years to your life. Then Musa said, then what? He said, you're going to die. He said, there's no difference. I'm ready. So that's, that's a reality that especially young people need to understand. And older. So you don't be so tempted and, and consumed by this life. So important for us to prepare ourselves for Ramadan. Another thing that I will tell you that you should start from now is to have the good in, the intention to do a lot of good deeds in Ramadan. Make sure that you have the intention from now. Why? Because Allah forbid anything happen to you. Distracted, sickness, uh, traveling, whatever can happen to you. Okay? It basically, it is something that you can quickly, re if you cannot do what you plan to do, Allah reward you for it anyway. So let's say you're planning to pray every day on time. That's my intention and I'm serious about it. One day or two days you get distracted. You still get the ajr of it. Your niyyah is to read the Qur'an and you did not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for it. So make sure that you have the intention. And by the way, yani you're not playing games with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, Shaykh Walid, I have the intention to read the Qur'an a hundred times. Yeah, sure. You know, you said, no, 
يخادعون الله وهو خادعهم. You playing game with Allah. Allah knows what you are capable of. Allah knows that you're just making this up. That you can't do that. But something that I can do, it's in my ability. And I have the intention to do it. And make sure that you aim high with your intention. Something to push yourself a little bit more. You know what? Last year I donated $5,000. This year I will push myself to make it seven. Last year I made one khatm al-Qur'an. This year I'm going to push myself and make two khatm al-Qur'an. Just an average reciter of the Qur'an. Okay, an average reciter of the Qur'an. Who reads slowly but smooth. If he reads every day one hour, he makes khatm al-Qur'an every three days. For one hour, straight, 60 minutes, you read, but your reading is smooth, and you don't stop. Even if it's slow, you will make Khatm al-Quran on every three days. It's not that hard, by the way. So, we, we, you know, if, if you are a quite faster, but let's say in every 10 days, yeah, you read. Every 10 days, you read the Quran. You make khatul. It can, but you have to dedicate it time. Anyway, so have the intention to do a lot of good deeds. Why intention is so good? Because you get reward if you fail to do it. Also, the second thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He sees that your intention is good, and you are psychologically, because intention has to do with your inner, inner, inner self. So from inside, you are determined. You have the will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He sees that from you, He make it easy for you to accomplish what you want. Allah doesn't look at your body as much as He look at your, or He looks, he looks at your heart, what's in your heart. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala find goodness in your heart, in the Quran, He will give you goodness. Let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala find goodness in your heart today, this week before Ramadan start. That I have the intention to do so many good. And I'm serious, I'm determined about it, I'm sincere about it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you to happen. It's not easy to wake up for Ramadan. It's not easy to stay the whole entire taraweeh. Even though alhamdulillah, in our message, it's easy to pray the whole taraweeh. Because it's because so many reasons, alhamdulillah. The best one of it is this beautiful community. And also, alhamdulillah, we have always good recitations, good reciters. The, the salah is not of that long, it's not that short, very suitable for people. So it is possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He sees that in your heart, He will make it easy for you. My brothers and sisters, another benefit of this good intention to have from now. أن الإنسان إذا كانت له لي صالحة يبدأ يحاسب نفسه على التقصير. When you have a good intention, intention to do one, two, three, and Ramadan start, and you're not fulfilling what you intend to do, you start hold yourself accountable. So if I have the intention, you know what, to pray every day in the masjid, I make sure that every day I pray Maghrib and Isha or Isha and Fajr in the masjid, and I start missing, say, hey, Walid, don't be hypocrite. You promise Allah Subhanahu wa Taala before Ramadan that you will do that. Hey, you stay, stay, basically keep up with what you intend to do. So it, you hold yourself accountable for your actions. Have the intention to make Khatm al-Qur'an. And I'll tell you about Khatm al-Qur'an, one beautiful, easy way to do it. If you want to double your Khatm al-Qur'an, just a tip, kida. If you want to double your Khatm al-Qur'an this year, you read every year Qur'an. Make another Khatma, which is al ulama also consider it, it's called Sama al-Qur'an. Just download one of your qari, you know, like for me, I like Sheikh, for example, Yasser Dosri, whatever, Al Ma'igli for Al Haram, and I download the whole Mus'haf. So what I do, I listen to the whole Mus'haf. That takes me about five days, that's a whole Khatm al Quran. That's exactly what you do when you come pray Taraweeh with us. You listen to the Quran. So that can be another Khatma you can achieve. A whole Khatm al-Qur'an just by listening it. And you can speed it up too. 1.5 or 0.5 or 0.75 in YouTube. So you can even go. And it will be excellent even if you can read with him. 
you know, with your eyes as you look at the mushaf. You can't do that. Have the niyyah to make sure that you don't miss a rak'ah and taraweeh. Don't be among the four, not the four wives. No, the four rak'ahs only. Salah. Don't be among those category. Four rak'ah and leave. Ya stay, ya eight rak'ah. The problem, and what, what's really interesting, those who finish after four rak'ah and leave, and they stay outside. قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ what Allah has for you in the salah better than anything else. <laughs> and the Nabi Sallallahu said, if you pray and you complete the salah with the Imam, you take the ajr of a whole entire night. Have the intention to increase your sadaqah this year. Have the intention to increase your attendance in the masjid. The, the number of salawat and the time that you spend inside the masjid. Al-mukuth, al-mukth, al-masjid. Have the intention to reach out to your family. Have the intention to forgive those who have done wrong to you. I will say that again, those who have done wrong to you. Somebody once told me, Sheikh, he did something, he did bad to me. I said, yeah, forgive him. He said, Sheikh, but he wronged me. I said, I know. Yani, what do you think forgiveness is for? For those who have done good to you? Forgiveness is about to forgive those who have done wrong to you. That's the whole point. Have the intention to be connected with your family members. Have the intention to spend more time with your parents. Young people, listen to me. Have iftar with your parents. Come closer to them. It's not for granted. Having them. You know, it's, you see, you're going to lose them one day. So make sure that you spend time with them, that you listen to them. You take advantage of them being in your life. Make sure that you have the intention to also to protect your siyam from anything that it is invalidate your siyam. mu'min ablagh min amalihi ulama. I can't emphasize enough on the importance of this issue. Of the issue of having the sincerity and the intention good before you start Ramadan. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ When there is no wealth or children will benefit you, except those who will comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. May Allah make us among them. أَقُولُ مَا سَمَيْتُمْ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ الحمد لله وحده الصلاة والسلام على رمي الله بيا بعده وبعد. My brother and sisters, one of the things that is so important for now to think about how I am going to execute my plans, my intentions. You have to think about it. Oh, I want to read Quran, but okay. So what time you gonna read every day? I'm gonna prepare. I'm gonna put this time for me to for the Quran. You know what? I want to do get I want to stay in the masjid. Okay, from now apply for a day is off to stay in the masjid. You have to make the plan. Hey, I need somebody to help me, which is a very good idea also, to have some kind of buddy, Ramadan buddy. You know, if it's a family member, it's if it's friends, you know what, let's work on this together. So make sure that you do that, and you plan for it, and you have a clear plan, what you will be able to do, according to your abilities, and being reasonable, because I'll tell you, you, might, you may delay, but time will not. Time will not. And Ramadan will go like this. Remember, it's not how many Ramadans you have under your belt. Oh, I fasted 20 Ramadan, 30 Ramadans. It's not the numbers of Ramadan in your life that count. It's the deeds in Ramadan, that's what counts. It's what you do during Ramadan, that's what really what, is count, what counts. My brothers and sisters, Make sure that you free your heart from all illness. Free yourself from sins. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will end my khutbah today with this example. And pay attention to this example because it was repeated several times in many references in the Quran and Sunnah. Your soul and heart is like a container. It's like a container. When your soul and when that container is filled with something, 
there is no space left for other things to come in. If I fill the cup of a cup with sand, there is no place to put rubies or gold or, or, or diamonds or, or rocks, whatever. You can't, it's halas filled. That's who you are. If you are so consumed by the haram, there is no space for the good deeds to come in. You have to start cleansing, moving. And guess what? how you fill your heart and your soul? With this, eyes, ear, tongue, thoughts, actions. That would fill that. So if your whole entire soul and, and, and heart filled with, let's stay with the lowest, with haram things. You're listening to the haram day and night. You're watching haram day and night. And haram is not def- divide or defined by me and you. Defined but what Allah said is haram. And what messengers of some said is haram. And if your heart and soul, that's one level. Another level which is all about, it's not haram. But it's all things among the worldly matter. Don't underestimate the dunya when it comes to the heart. If all what you come through your eyes, through your ear, through your tongue, through your action, is all about this worldly matter. It's all about your body. It's all about your clothes. It's all about your luxury things. It's all about sports. It's all about, you know, all these things, regardless of how good or bad. But that's all what your body and your heart is filled with, worldly life. There's no space for God. Don't think either magically you're going to have a space for it. Until you start cleansing and removing and replacing that. So don't underestimate what you've been doing to your hearts all the year long. But alhamdulillah, the beautiful things about this religion is a tawbah is a door which is open. Which is that cleansing, al-istighfar. You always have the opportunity to switch and to reverse. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts to accept the truth and to be among those who worship him in a way that it will please him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all our shortcomings. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us enjoy the month of Ramadan and to enjoy the ibadah during the month of Ramadan. And to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive those who are passed away and to heal those who are sick and to guide those who are misguided. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his names and attributes to bring peace to the world and to end all the, war, the wars and the injustice that we see in the world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us safe in our town, in our home, and all our neighbors. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this masjid and the community of this masjid and to bless, bless us all and our families. O oh Allah, protect us and our children from all the fitan. ma zahara minha wa ma batan. اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدنيا والدين والأهل والولد اللهم أنزل علينا رحمتك وبارك لنا فيما فيما بقي من شعبان وفيما يقدم من رمضان اللهم أعنا فيه على الصيام والقيام اللهم أعنا فيه على الصيام والقيام اللهم أعنا فيه على عيد ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اغفر للميتين اللهم اغفر للميتين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات واللي علينا خيارنا وأبد عنا شرارنا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام وتوفنا وأنت راض عنا يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم على نبينا محمد وقوموا للصلاة يرحمكم الله